Hey everybody, it's Quad Nines back again. Got another late night brew for you. This time I'm doing modern. Uh, if you've seen any of my other deck techs, you know I generally like playing elves and legacy and modern, uh, just in different variants. But uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this one you can go really aggro or combo, either one. Um, start with the mana base. I uh, got two of the Nykthos, which really shine in this deck. There's a lot of uh, the double green spells at the three drops and then onward. Uh, this is not optimal. I should probably have four Verdants and four Misties, but on Moto I don't play a lot of Modern, so I don't have, I've got one of each fetch, but not a bunch, so that's the reason for the extra forest and not as many fetches. So if you're going to build some paper, four Misties, four Verdants, the two Overgrowns, and a Temple Garden, skip the Martial Arts, although it does actually fetch both of these, and then just cut down on your forest. Um, I got this list, um, tweaked it off of one I saw on the daily, it went 3-1 like the beginning of November so they actually ran 15 lands I'm not quite that brave uh, I've got a I like having two in every starting hand and 17s the, the odd zone right number to have at least two or to have two lands in your starting hand on average so I run 17 lands I've got two of the summoners packed um, I'm never really worried about losing the game from the trigger because either I already have four lands in play when I cast it or I'm winning the game that turn I'm, pretty good about playing around it otherwise. Uh, the one drops have a bunch of one mana, uh, you know, basically just mana producers. Uh, Death Rite Shaman, of course, can do any of the things. That is the reason for the splash of the Overgrown Tomb. Um, also have one Arbor Elf, the playset of Mystics, got a playset of the Heritage Druids, one of the combo pieces, two Land of War Elves, and four of the Sentinels. And the reason I've got two Land of War Elves and one Arbor Elf I just don't like having, you know, for some reason they could take out all of one card out of your deck because like surgical extraction. I know it's not run much, but if they did something like that, it's better to have like a two and one split on pretty much a the same card. So um, there's that. Two drops, I only have the Elvis Visionaries, which are really good, and they draw you a card, add to your elf count, which really helps with the Heritage of Druid and the Arch Druids. Um, one of the threes, Lead the Stampede, is the closest thing to Glimpse of Nature you get in this format. Now, of course, you can't trigger it a bunch of times a turn, but you know, just when you've got 35 creatures in the deck looking at the top five, it usually draws you three, sometimes five. You actually, I've actually drawn five many times. Uh, the Elvis Arch Druid, if you get to play this on turn two and untap, you can a lot of times just win the game on turn three. He makes a ton of mana, uh, you can play your elves out. And of course, he pumps all your other else if you just need to go aggro and beat down. Uh, Azuri is kind of like a mini crater hoof or overrun because that's what his ability is the five mana. Give all your elves, which is pretty much every creature in the deck that would be pumping, uh, plus three, plus three, and trample. So, you know, you play a couple of elves, play Azuri, have enough mana to pump them, and just swing in. And in the game pretty quickly that way if they don't deal with him. Imperius Perfect's just another lord, but he can also spit out elves. Or she actually, it's definitely a girl. Uh, spit out elves, you know, one tap, make it up. Just standard stuff. Yeah, playing uh, two of those and four of the arch dudes for the six total lords. Now, Elvish Promenade is not a card you've seen in a lot of the elf decks. It's, uh, it doesn't make a lot of elves, though. I mean, generally, if you're casting it on turn three, you're probably making four elves. Uh, which, you know, if you've got a Sentinel and a Heritage Druid in play, um, you know, you're going to untap the Sentinel. Make a bunch of elf, we'll tap some more of them for more mana, cast something else, untap the sentinel, tap again. And that, that's how the combo works. So you just rinse and repeat on that. Garrick is kind of a lead to stampede number five, because that's what his plus one ability is basically. But you can also just play him, you can like turn, sometimes turn four, you know, three or four, uh, with a couple guys untap them and metal sentinel untaps, and then just put a crater into play and bash for a lot of times lethal. And I was mentioning him being a planeswalker, a different permanent type. Sometimes, you know, they got all of the creature removal, they wipe your board, but you might still just have just enough mana to cast him and then refill your hand. Uh, Regal Force in every elf combo deck since there's been elf combo. And a lot of times you just refill your hand. And he's also a 5 5, which is nothing to, you know, to shake a stick at. So it's uh, pretty good. And then Crater Hoof, your win condition usually, you get him into play with a couple guys untapped and just in the game. Uh, Court of Calling, only one of uh, Grand Locks, if you don't have the hair, you drew it out, but you've got a bunch of uh, elves, whether it be token or just the mana dorks, you can tap them 
uh, end of turn, you can convoke and get something out in play. Ain't gonna worry about that. So, in the sideboard, I've got three thoughts of these to bring against control and uh, combo. You can bring in against like Jun, for example, to maybe take their thoughts of these or just you know, Liliana or just something that you can't deal with. Um, but yeah, they usually just come in against certain matchups. Against the fair decks, you don't really bring it in much. Uh, Corrosive Gale, uh, you know, it can take down multiple uh, Vendillion Clicks, Delvers, anything like that. Leyline of Vitality is really good against the burn decks because you, know, you can put it in play for free if you have your opener. It gives all your creatures uh, plus one on toughness, which makes it harder for them to get burned out or just removed. And then the life gain is, uh, is pretty good, like I said, in the big aggro burn matchups. So. Uh, and then I've got the Crows and Grip, which is basically for Birthing Pod, or even if you can use it on any of the Affinity decks, or the, the Tetherit White Steel deck, stuff like that. And the Scavenging Ooze, you know, if you got a, a Graveyard based deck, or just something that's just trying to flashback stuff like the uh, Blue, Red, right, Blue, Red, White Control deck, you know, they have Snapcaster, you just eat it in response. And occasionally you just, you know, eat all of your own creatures that have been killed and make one really big scavenging ooze and just beat them. Uh, Pride Mage also for Birthing Pod and just uh, trouble enchantments and artifacts. Graph Digger's Cage shuts down Living In, I believe. No, I think Living In actually gets around that. Um, but it does shut down Birthing Pod, which is a big part of the game right now. And any reanimator like the, um, the Gristle Brand deck where you, they just, uh, Goro's Revenge. Goro's Vengeance, I'm sorry. I played that at the clock. I should know that. The Gorilla's Vengeance deck shuts it down. Uh, Beastly Man just takes care of anything you need to take care of. Gives them a 3-3, but you really don't care most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the 75 that I'm playing right now. Uh, it's a little different in Paper Lock 6. I've got a better mana base, but uh, it works pretty well. So let's uh, go to some games. Okay, now we're into some matches here. And uh, this hand is not great. Um, it does have a turn one mana producer uh, and two lands with some elves in here. So hopefully we can draw into something good. Uh, in the dark, I'm going to keep this. If I know what I'm playing against, I, I might not though. So I'm going to keep on the draw as well. So hopefully we can get something. Uh, well, if it gets burned, it might not be fun. Of course, I almost always have one drop. So that's probably not the case. You know, the visionary, not the worst draw. For sure. So. so I still don't really know what we're up against. Um, two Theros Coil Mountains doesn't tell me a whole lot. Flame Jeff. Oh, this might be the Travis Wood bro I just, just saw on his stream not too long ago. It, uh, it can kill like turn three or four, so we could be in trouble if we don't stick a guy here pretty soon. Let's uh, see if we can draw into something here. But yeah, if it, it really can go off rather quickly, so here's definitely hoping we, uh, we draw something good. Hair screw is not bad, um, probably unless we draw an untapped lance in order to use it for anything. Or another one drop. Another one drop would be fine, actually. What we got? The flame dev is going to kill. Get out of this box. Wild get, yep, that's what it is. It's the, uh, the Travis Wood brew that you've been playing with. Uh, Pyromancer's Ascension, Flame Jab, all the discard smell, spells, uh, like Wild Guess and Faith Flooding, all that stuff. Uh, uh, Reforge the Soul plays that as well. So, um, draw a card, I guess. We're not dead yet, but uh, it could be going off very soon. Here's perfect. Ugh. Well, you know it is. Let's see, retrace. You can always retrace to kill our land, which would be the worst thing. I'd rather not. <laughs> but uh, let's see what we can get here. Now, of course, from here, assuming we're not dead, um, I draw an, an untapped land. Uh, well, I actually don't even have to do that. Draw untapped land. Could play Heritage Druid, tap him and the elves, the visionaries. Make six mana, cast Garrett, cast Regal Force, and have a little something going. But uh, that deck is quite, quite different, so I'm not, not real sure where to go with this. 
to flame jab us um, a little bit more now because this is going to make my guys a little bit bigger which we like we like a lot yes ability and uh, I apologize the other night for my poor play by play but uh, I'm not really used to having to talk about what I'm doing as I'm playing uh, I have hard enough time just figuring it out as it's going on but uh, if this will draw something Oh, well, that's something. I made basic forest. Uh, no need for black mana. We're paying extra life now. So, let me see if it's. Court of Calling. I don't know what that's going to do for me, to be honest. Um, I don't know what's going on that. Hmm. So I put a tap there and there. Make three green and tap these two. So I'm going to get two drop. If you know that. She's not even the last one draw a card. Doesn't really do much. If I could get a uh, arch dude in play out, that would be better. So I'm just going to go and get through the, the mad beats with just, uh, just the one here. <laughs> we'll try it on. Of course, next time we can do any number of things. And Garrick, uh, hopefully, just let me put a crater within the play. Nope, okay, we'll just, just gonna see it. They didn't have it. I don't know how. They flung us through all lands. Um, that does not take care of that. Uh, let's we'll go on the scavenging news plan. Looks like this deck also plays. Um, Power Master of Ascension, so going to get Beast Within. It's uh, pretty much the same as a Crows and Grip, except for it's you know, instant, I mean, it's not decent speed, but uh, it can deal with another permanent or two you might have. Um, now, what to cut? Cut a Summoner's Packs. It's got both of them. Um, Visionary. Why not get there with Zuri? Uh, actually, you know what? Cut the front line. Bring the Zuri back in. The regenerate is a lot better. I don't know what I'm saying. Definitely want that. Regenerate is very good. Um, okay, one land and some stuff. Let's hope he doesn't kill our mana guy. But uh, he probably will. Actually, let's put the uh, Deathrite Shaman into play because he does have two toughness. Uh -oh. So, yeah. Um, if you get a chance, go into Twitch and uh, check out the archives of Travis Wood's stream if you want to check out what this deck does, unless he shows us this game, which I <laughs> hope he doesn't, but if he does, you'll, you'll see it's a pretty, pretty sweet deck. So, I'm going to do some of the work for him here with uh, Marsh Flats fetching the Bayou. Not Bayou, I wish it was a Bayou. <laughs> An overgrown to him, wrong format. And then, until I the Bayou, I have to shot myself. So the hope is next turn I just get to see my go off, but uh, it would really require up. Oh, there it is, gonna get rid of that thing as fast as possible. So how would I go about that? Okay, gonna green. Can I even do it this turn? I don't think so. Um, I get the most guys out of here. Um, we'll play one metal sentinel and one elish mystic. That way I'll have at least one possible mana guy out. Uh, but we'll also be able to play just one. I guess only one creature. Oh, I forgot that. Works on magical line. You gotta make the mana first. Sure, untap the thing that's not untapped. So yeah, probably just gonna go 
but it hopefully peels off a couple cards this turn and then I get to destroy the Pyre Master's Ascension. Give him the 33 that I just really don't care about. So. World Fire, by the way, is going to link this in this deck. It's kind of crazy. So. Okay. He has a lot of rituals in the deck. Um, he's not playing. He's playing the Wild Guest. Gonna get the trigger. Uh, okay. So, yep, definitely gonna beast within that thing. If at all possible, the Dried All is not the way to do it, but this is. Really? Yes, yes I do. So we're going to spit a bunch of guys out and kill his apartment. So essentially... And draw a card in the process. Yep, you do it, it doesn't do anything. Interesting. Top card. Ooh, Lady Stampede. Do we dare keep going off? Well, we've got soon to be triple metal sentinel. So, yeah, what can I do? Uh, let's go and cast my thing. Let's get the, get the combo fully assembled. And let's go ahead and all yield. Yes. Of course, did it for all of the new sentinels. Or we just drive ourselves crazy with triggers. So that's one the big deal about uh, playing moto um, instead of say you know paper magic is you can time yourself out playing some kind of combo with. Oh, cancel! What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what I did there, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was just silly. But yeah, you can definitely uh, time yourself out just trying to click on all your triggers that in paper, you know, you just say, yes, that's what I want to do. And it's just it's instantaneous here. You click, click, click. So definitely use your auto yields. And I could have sworn. Okay. Okay, so sure. Still netting mana every time we uh, cast something pretty much. Alright, uh, cast this. Cast that in. Like I said, this is a little bit tedious than on the Magic Online, but uh, the paper is like, play this, make this, play this, make this. It, it goes a lot easier. Uh, now my guys are pretty big. Um, shoot. One more time. attack with uh, seven power this turn so should help blow that up and eat the rest of his 
Tito Rest was great, but this will probably get the concession down us. So. so yeah, you've got a three three, congrats. Um Yep, see. So, um, we got a good game against this deck, so I don't know, we'll try and find a little bit different one for the next game. Thanks for watching.